Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 22 of what if Naruto was trained by all the greats at a young age. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was betrayed by Hagoromo on Annie making three link will be at the top of the description for you guys to enjoy and he also posts a new episode on this channel of what if Naruto is the descendant of this sage so go ahead and check out that as well guys and remember if you're new in this the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Annie making and making three go ahead and click that red subscribe button and also guys I haven't heard any news about Annie making two yet I've seen you guys asking me down in the comments but don't worry, as soon as I find out, I'll be informing you guys immediately. So yeah, without further ado, what is we begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last part we left off, as Naruto had called the Kazakagi, the man was shocked as he thought that Naruto wanted to change the deal, so this time we'll have to pay him more. But Naruto wanted to dismantle the deal, as the man was surprised by that, as Naruto wanted them to be friends. That again shocked the man as he couldn't believe it, as he did not understand why Naruto was doing this. Naruto knew that the moment anything happened, the sign was going to turn against them. Because despite the agreement, they were not friends. Yes, they were not friends at all. They were just being bullied into the situation. So the both of them talked as they accepted the deal. As Naruto talked with the other nations. As he even talked to the hidden sound. As Sugetsu has rise up and taken the control. As he spoke to the Raikage who didn't want any part of this, well, alliance. As Naruto told him about the Akasuke. But the man didn't seem to really care about Yujito. From the way he spoke, that was the intention that Naruto got from the man. So Naruto made a deal with him, a deal that would work out in both of their favors. As the rest of the time went on, Naruto spoke to the council about these agreements that they made, as Danzo was furious about it. But Naruto already had most of the council backing behind him. As Ryuki came to talk to Naruto in the office, as he wanted to squash, well, the recent developments with Naruto and the Uchiha's. But Naruto still didn't trust the man one bit. As the man and him spoke as he came to some sort of agreement, but Naruto still did not trust him one bit, as he knew that his man was sneaking and conniving. After that, Yujito came to the village, as Naruto had paid the Raikage for her to be his bodyguard for one year, as she went and took her duty seriously. Yujito didn't understand though, they were treating her like she was a part of the family, as she didn't understand that, as Alisa. Seeing that the treatment between the San and Konoha was now sorted out, Alisa wanted to become a ninja, as she wanted to become a ninja just like her mother and her brother. But Kushina wasn't so happy about this. Seeing the life of a ninja and what it does to people, she wasn't so well happy about it. But after a good conversation between them, yes, things were sorted out. Things were still not good with Haku and Gabriella. As both him and Tewa went out, well nothing too drastic, they were just friends. As she wanted a drink and she begged him not to make her drink alone. So he drank with her as she invited him over. As the both of them end up kissing. As he didn't back away. As he leaned into the kiss at first until he backed away. As he quickly told her he had to leave. The training session between the team went normal. Until Haku went away leaving Gabriella and T.Y. there. As T.Y. told her that if she had someone like Haku she would never. Treat him this way. Gabriela went over towards Haku. She didn't wait there to curse or anything. She just wanted to be there with him. Despite everything, she still loved him. As Naruto also trained and see what he could do. He could only make 400 Shadow Clones. Not nearly as enough as he used to make. As Yujito was quite impressed. 
Consider what she saw so far, he was at S-Rank Shinobi, same way, as he was still incredibly powerful, despite not having a Kyubi inside of him. So yeah guys, that was basically that's what I thought of you guys can switch across to Blaze and for yourself, so what do you say begin this new episode? From the lookout, he looked upon his village, it was raining of course, it was always raining, and he loved his village. Even after the war and the misery and the death, he still loved the village and he loved his people. It was for them, the innocents, the helpless ones, the orphans that he had struggled so long and hard, so bitterly to gain power. He hated war. All of his fellow Akaske members, save Conan, would have been shocked to hear that. But it was true. Rain country had been a battleground throughout the Third Great Ninja War. He had seen the first hand of brutality and pointlessness of war. It never solved anything. There was always another enemy. There was always a reason to fight. As he wanted to show the world how pointless it was, he wanted to give the world and his people blessings of peace. And he had started out well. First, he went after Hanzo and took the man down. Then he went after Hanzo's family and friends as he killed them all. He killed every last person that worked with or supported Hanzo. He let them all know that new age had begun and there was no going back to the old age. As he finally brought peace to his village, with his power he watched over them like a god. No one saw him, no one knew where he really was, but they all knew that he was there and they obeyed without questioning. He nodded to himself he was pleased with what he'd done here. He intended to give the blessing of his peace to the whole world. Conan quietly approached him as he turned to face her. She was his one and only dear friend. She was also his messenger and to the people hidden off the range she was an angel. The one who brought the words of their hidden god down to the people. We may have a problem said Conan. What sort of problem said Pain. It seems Naruto has hired Yujito to act as a bodyguard. She's in Konoha with him now under constant unlaw surveillance. I see. Well that would make things more interesting. What do you want to be done about this? Nothing for the time being. We will leave the two tails be. We will concentrate on going after the other two first. The Nebe can wait for now. Konon nodded as she left him. As he returned looking out at the rain. That was not a bad move Sixokagi. But all you can do is delay me for a moment. Nothing will stop me. Time skip. Naruto. I want to ask a favor said Shikamaru. I kinda guess you would. Since you went through the trouble of coming here said Naruto. As they were currently in the Namikaze private library. So what is it? Temari wants you to marry us. Oh I'm flattered said Naruto. But I'm sure that he not would object. And I prefer you and Temari as just friends. Shikamaru looked at him. You're being troublesome. Shikamaru, with you, everything is troublesome. Look, Naruto, since you're the Hokage now, she really wants you to be the one to marry us. Well, knowing Temari, I guess she's adamant about it. And you will be in trouble if I don't agree. Pretty much, said Shikamaru. You two are getting married on October 1st, right? As Naruto had already gotten a wedding invitation. Yeah, it's the first available Saturday after I turn 16. I don't know, Shikamaru. I mean, performing a wedding. That seemed rather troublesome, said Naruto. Naruto, do you want her to kill me? asked Shikamaru. Hmm. But I suppose if my chief advisor was the one that was getting married, I suppose I can't say no. Hey, I thought I was your best friend. Actually, I still think of Hinata as my best friend, said Naruto. I told you before I don't want jobs to Shikamaru. It's way too much responsibility. You will get to spend more time in the village. You won't have to take their many troublesome missions. Being chief advisor would be rather troublesome. I would have responsibilities and people would come looking for me for advice, not just you. That would be a rather big drag. Well then, I'll get you a nice present when I show up with Hinata as a guest. Shikamaru stood there trying to seem imposing for five long minutes but Naruto simply ignored him. Fine, I'll do it. Well that's good, said Naruto. I'll be happy to perform the ceremony. Time skip. Kakashi was standing with Naruto in the house as he was shocked. So what do you think? Is it a good jutsu Naruto asks? Good? Naruto, it's, it's... Kakashi was trying to find out a good description for Naruto to show them. As Naruto looked at him, it's a perfect defense for the Sharingan. According to Hinata, it worked against Ibiakan as well. I suppose it would work against any dojutsu. Kakashi shook his head, dojutsu, eye techniques, were considered the most powerful and effective of all ninja techniques. A jutsu that can defeat them was incredibly valuable, even if there was a drawback. When you use it though, you will be left under the same conditions as your opponent. I'll take those odds every time, brother. You and Hinata are the only one that know about this technique. I need you to keep that secret. Kakashi nodded. Of course, you don't want Itachi to hear about it and try to develop a counter to it. 
No. Itachi. Or none of the other Uchiha's near the thought to himself. Time skip. Shikamaru gulp as Kimaru just use her fan to rip down, well, a large stack of trees. As she had a big smile. Being a hostage was really not fun. As she held on to her large fan. So, after I get back into fighting shape, is your good friend the Hokage gonna make me a leaf ninja, she said. As Shikamaru nodded slowly. Naruto says if you sue her out, he will enroll you as a genin. Genin, she said. Who the hell said anything about a genin? Well, wasn't that your rank in the sand? Only because we surrender before I could be promoted. Tell him to give me the Jonin test and I'll pass it. Jonin, Temari, you haven't used a Kuna or used a Jutsu in three years. You think you're ready to try it for Jonin? She shrugged, just give me a couple of weeks and I guarantee I'll be fine. Oh, by the way, also my Joji dropped by the other day. They said something about a bachelor party. You're not planning on having one, are you? She asked. Well, it's sort of a sacred male tradition here. He mumbled as he took a few steps back. Oh yeah? Well, in the sand we have a male. Tradition as well. It's called castration. The women in my village practice it on men. If they prefer drinking and chasing strippers than being their loving fiancés. Jeez, I forgot how scared she really is. And I just had to fall in love with her. What a drag. You know, on second thought, a bachelor party would be rather troublesome. Time skip. You look bored, said Naruto, as he was currently holding a scroll in his hand. Yujito shrug will guard you. Isn't the most excitable job I ever had. You know you can sit down if you want. She shook her head. As long as I'm on duty, I'll stand. Why don't you take a 15 minute break? I promise, I won't tell your boss. She looked at him for a moment, not sure if he was serious. When he pulled out the chair next to him, she sat down. She wasn't tired, she just thought it was easier to amuse him. You know, you're very difficult to figure out. Thank you. I enjoy being a mystery to people, he said. Yujito looked at him seriously. I have read your entry in the bingo book. I know you have killed and gone on your share of S and A rank missions. You were also a Jinjulki recently. All of which means you cannot be as cheerful and naive as you act. Sure I can. It's really not that hard, said Naruto. She shook her head. Are you ever serious? Only when I have to be, he said. Tell me, how do you expect to be the leader of your village? With such an attitude, Akagi has to be strong enough to do what's necessary for the good of the village. You mean like your Raikagi? Yes, the Raikagi is able to make hard choices and the sacrifices that are necessary. Oh, I believe that, said Naruto. I'm sure that he'll be willing to sacrifice you for the good of the village. She frowned. I am a ninja of the village hidden within the clouds. I have always understood that my life may be needed as a sacrifice for the protection of the village. That is true of every ninja of every village. The moment we receive our headbands, we become swords of the village and the shields. We understand that we must fight so that our village may live on and even die as well. But Yujito, as he turned rather serious, there's a difference between sacrificing a life and throwing a life away. Are you sure? She said. Yes, I am. It's the difference between being a tool and a human being. All ninjas are tools to be used. When Zabuza rescued me, he said I belonged to him, mind, body and soul. Now that he is gone, I am nothing. As near to remember Haku words, if we should die, it should be for a reason, for a cause. Not because someone finds our existence inconvenient, or because they fear what we hold. You really do believe that, don't you, she said. Yes, I do, he said. Then how? How can you stand to be Hokage? You must know that your orders will call some to die. You will surely be in situation when you have to send people to your deaths. How will you be able to stand that? I will be able to stand that by remembering those who are put in harm's way are ninjas and understand that they have to be in danger and I would never order someone to a pointless death. Every person in this village is precious to me and I care about all of them. My godmother, Lady Snally the fifth, often saying that she was acting as a hukaki when she put people in danger. She did what was necessary to protect the village but it was never pointless. The people she put in danger was never just pointless to her. Never tools for her to use and throw away. And that is how I think your Raikage use you and others beneath him. Just as tool to be used. From what you said you think it's pretty obvious that I'm not like the Raikage. I thank you for that. I take it as a high compliment and as proof that I'm acting the way I should be. Time skip. Later that night Yujito fell asleep. As she woke up as she was going through a meadow. As the sky was a beautiful shade of blue. As she smelled the flowers all around. As she walked she saw a grey house cat with a lighter color strolled up to her. 
She carefully picked the cat up and started to stroke the cat with her arms. I see you're in a good mood today, Nibby. The cat purr, as the cat looked up with her red eyes. A feminine voice spoke in Yujito's head. You like him, don't you? Who are you talking about, Yujito said. You know, the blonde boy that you're protecting. You think he's cute and you like how heroic he tried to be. He's not heroic, he's just foolish. That's true, but it doesn't mean that you don't like him. As the cat then simply smiled. Naruto and Yujito sit in a tree. K-I-S-S. Enough, said Yujito. Anymore, and I won't bet you. Fine. Yujito-chan, can I ask you a favor? No, I'm not taking your color off. How did you know that's what I wanted? It's the only thing you ever asked for. You know I can't take the color off. Maybe argue, but she gave up after a short time. She can always try again tomorrow. Time skip. Naruto was at the library table as Yamekin suddenly appeared. Hey boss, I got a letter for you. Okay, let's see, said Naruto. As the toad hand over his scroll. As Naruto read over, go back Jiren and tell him that me and my team will be joining him in the next hour. Right, boss. As the frog poofed away. As Naruto headed towards the door. Come on, Yujito, we're heading for the tower. What's going on? She asks. Well, Jiren has been on the road since I became Hokage, looking for the Akasuke. I take it he found something. Yeah, you might say that. He found Itachi and Kabuto, said Naruto. Time skip. Naruto pulled out his blade and tore it in the air. As he placed it back in his sheet. That's the fourth time you brought out your blade in the last 10 minutes, said Yujito. Sorry. Nervous habit, I guess. You seem really anxious. Yeah, Itachi and I have a long history. And we have things to settle. It's personal for you, isn't it? No. He and Kabuto are going to die for the crimes they committed against his village. I won't let personal feelings be a part of this. Sure, said Yujito. As she didn't believe him for a second. Time skip. As it took about 15 minutes for his team to gather a tower, as he relayed to them what Jerry had found. Jerry has one of my three components so can use the Irish Inn. Does that mean you can carry each of us while you use the Irish Inn? Kakashi asks, I remember Sensei telling me once that he could not carry more than one person with it. That's right, and carrying one person used up a lot of chakras than Naruto. Then how do you plan to get us all there? Naruto pulled out a scroll. Kiba eyes bugged out. No way you're putting me and Akamar into a scroll. If Naruto can, think that it's safe. I'm sure it is, said Hinata. I've been placed in school before. It's painless and you don't feel time passing, said Kakashi. Right, said Naruto. This is how I send my uncle here. I guarantee that you and Akamaru will be fine. Yuji to look at Kiba, if you're afraid. You can always stay here, she said. Kiba took one look at her and gave one of his winning smile. No Inuzakas are ever afraid of anything. You know, you're rather cute. How about after I take out the bad guy? You and I go and celebrate. No thanks, I have a rule. I would not go in out with someone who smelled like white dog. As Naruto chuckled, seeing the look on Kiba's face, he turned towards Yujito. We should be back in a day or two. Please keep eyeing everyone while I'm gone. What? What are you talking about? I'm coming with you, she said. Naruto shook his head. That wouldn't be a good idea. You're a target for Akasuke. If you came with us, you would be in great danger. It's safer for you to stay here. She frowned and placed her hands on her hips. I was hired to be your bodyguard. If you're going into danger, then I'm coming to protect you. If you were to kill while I was sitting around here, I would be permanently disgraced. If you plan on going into danger, Hokage-san, I insist on coming with you. But am I your bodyguard, she said cutting him off. Or am I just a crystal figurine that must be kept safe? Naruto sighed. Maybe Shika had it right back when we were kids. Maybe all the women are troublesome. Well, except for Hinata. Alright, but be very careful, said Naruto. As Naruto put the scroll down on the floor, Everyone get together as a group in front of me, he said. And so they all did. As he went through hand signs. Seal, he said. As Kakashi, Hinata, Kiba, Akamaru, and Yujito disappear into the scroll as a symbol appear on it. As Naruto rolled up the scroll. I'll leave the five clones here. They'll listen to you, so you're the one really in charge, said Naruto. As he looked at Shizune. She looked down at that. What's wrong, said Naruto. The last time I was in charge was when Sinai Sama went to rescue you. As Naruto felt guilt at that, well, hopefully, it could go a lot better this time. You shouldn't be leaving on a mission to go on one this dangerous, she said. Your duty is here in the village. There is no real choice. I'm the only one to know the higher chain and we have to get there immediately. Then why not summon Gamkiche and have him deliver a scroll to Jiraiya? Great. This is what I get for having an assistant that know all my tricks. They may need me, so I have to go. Is this because of Itachi? Maybe a little, said Naruto. But it's more because Akasuke and I 
happen to be the strongest ninja in the village. I can't just sit here behind the decks when I know people I care about are facing that kind of danger. If something happened to anyone and I was at least there to help them, I would never forgive myself. So every time they face a cask you plan to be there, she asks. He nodded without hesitation. That's right. I plan to give every ninja in this village one of my three from Kunai. If any of them run the Akaski or other s rank ninjas, I plan to act as an emergency reinforcement. Naruto, she whispered. You'll be putting yourself in constant danger. I know. But isn't that what Hokage is supposed to do? Protect the people of the village no matter what. She slowly nodded as she went up and hugged him. As she gave him a kiss on the cheek. You better come back safe and sound. We need you, she said. We'll all come back safe, Aunt Shizune. He wanted to say that it was a promise but he knew better as he gave her a cheerful smile and then he was gone. In the next instant, thousands of miles away, there was a little flash. Took you long enough kid, said Jiraiya, as Naruto saw a huge valley below him, probably twice as wide as the valley of the inn, with a river pouring down it. The sky was dark, as lightning was cackling, rain was already drenching him. As Jiraiya was standing there, his hair hanging down the side of his head, is this really river country? It feels a whole lot more like rain country. Kamikichi should have warned me there was a storm. He couldn't have. The sky was clear just 10 minutes ago, said Jiraiya. As lightning split the sky with a crash of thunder. This started just 10 minutes ago, said Naruto. You sure about that, perfect granddad? Of course I'm sure. And will you stop calling me that? From now on, you should address me as Jiraiya Sensei. Sure, said Naruto. And from now on, you can call me Okage-sama. Hmm, like all ever, said Jiraiya. Well, seems like we're at the impasse, perfect granddad, said Naruto. As he pulled the scroll, release. As they came out, Yujito was there up in the pouring rain. Is there something wrong, Yujito chan? He asked. I hate being wet, she mumbled. Alright then, said Naruto. As he turned to Jiraiya, where's Itachi and Kabuto? Down there somewhere. I lost track when they entered the valley. Hinata chan, said Naruto. Byakkan, she said. As she scanned the area, Naruto, I searched a two mile radius and I don't see anyone. That means they got away, said Kiba. No, said Jiraiya. I think they're still in the valley somewhere. It's a lot more than two miles, so they're likely just out of Hinata's range. Kiba, any chance to ask? Are you joking? There's no way me and Akamar can pick up a scent in all of this. Great. This place is huge, said Naruto. As Naruto formed his hands together, as he created a dozen clones as he went down. Is that all, kid? Aren't you going to form some more? asked Jiraiya. No, I don't want to use up my chakra. I hate doing this, but I can't. Risk losing Inachi and Kabuto. We have to find and deal with them. We'll have to split up. If you spot them, call in the rest of the team. We'll take care of two of them as a group. We'll split into three squads. Me and Yujito. Kakashi and Kiba. Akamaru and Private Granddad with Hinata-chan. Are you sure when you split up Naruto? Asked Kakashi. That can be a dangerous tactician. When? You're facing an enemy in an unknown ground. If we wait, we risk letting him get away, said Naruto. We all have radio communicators as soon as you spot them. Tag to the channel and let us all know. As Naruto looked towards Jiraiya. What are they doing here anyway? Your note did not say. They're chasing someone. Who? Oh, I don't know. Well, as long as they're here, I guess it doesn't really matter why. Now let's put up. And remember to call if you spot them. As more lightning filled the sky, they rush into the valley. Time skip. Enough. And annoyed, Itachi pushed Kabuto's arm away from his arm. You're not fully healed, said Kabuto. I'm healed enough to wear jutsus, and that is sufficient. Kabuto shrugged if his partner wants to suffer a little extra pain. That will be fine. Well, he put up a surprisingly good fight, said Kabuto. Yes, he knew enough to avoid eye contact with me, and we were not aware of his full abilities. Now that we know that, he'll be easy enough to catch her. That is if you can find him. He won't leave any tracks that we can follow in here. Our leader will not tolerate failure in this matter. To capture him is the highest command given to us by the Akaske. So what do you want to do, Kabuto asked. We will split up and seek him out, Itachi decided, as lightning and thunder crash once again. Meanwhile, Sojaku dropped to his knees as he was breathing heavily, but he only need a minute to recover his stamina. His eyes darted about looking for the man in the black cloaks with red clothes on them. He didn't see them, he couldn't hear them, and he didn't smell them. As he held onto the wound on his thigh, the kunai had cut deep, but he was almost totally healed. Without the storm, he would have left a big bloody trail, but with all the rain, there was no chance of it giving him away. Having finally caught his breath, he got up and he started to run once again. Time skip. As the original Naruto came to a stop as one of his clones had dispelled. What is it? Have you found something? asked Yujito. Oh yeah, I found something. As he switched his radio to Sen. Everyone, this is Naruto. One of my clones has spotted the target. I want you all to join me. Over. As he switched to receive. 
but all he heard was static. Heavy static. As he hit the send button, this is Naruto. Can anyone hear me? He asked. But the only thing he heard was crackle and pop up static. Yuchito looked up at more lightning shook the heavens. It is all this lightning, she said. It must be agonized in the air, so radio waves won't work. Damn it. It's up to us then. Come on, said Naruto. Meanwhile, Kakashi and Kibo were approaching the river. With all the rain pouring down, it was starting to flood over the banks. The water was gigantic, rapidly over. He and Kibo were about to leap over it. Look out, said Kakashi. As Boat, Akamaru and Kiba dive out of the way. As three kunais pierced where they were. Kabuto came out of hiding. Hello, Kakashi. Hello, Kiba. It's nice to see you two again. Kakashi hit the send button. This is Kakashi, and we found Kabuto. But the only thing he heard was static. As he knew enough about atmosphere and lightning to know what was going on. Kiba. Looked like it's just the three of us. That's fine with me, said Kiba. As Akmar barked in agreement as well. While Hinata was apprentice Nadia and Naruto had gone away, the both of them had actually gone on many missions together. So what are you two doing out here anyway? Fishing trip maybe, Kabuto said. He said in a rather polite tone. We're here to end your life and the life of Itachi Uchiha, said Kakashi. Well, isn't that sweet? So much attention from the old home. Made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. By the way, did Naruto get my gift basket? I send him one in honor of him making Okage. It's always good to see people that you know doing well. You have guts, I'll give you that. Kakashi raised his headband to show his Sharingan. But even if you have guts, you're still nothing but a damn traitor. Kabuto pushed his glasses up. Would it help if I say I was sorry? Kiba, plan 4. Right, said Kiba as he went through hand signs. Man beast, doppelganger. With a poof of smoke, him and Akamar transform into a pair of half man, half beast warriors. As they rush straight towards Kabuto, Kabuto block. As he tried to engage him in Taijutsu, as he was smiling, thinking they were no danger to him. His teammate Inata was much more powerful. The only danger was from Kakashi who was hanging back, as the other two attacked him. Looking for a weakness, obviously. So, I'll wrap this up quickly, Kabuto said. As he activated Struck her scalpels, as he strike. Akamar turned back into his real form, and he was hopping on three legs. As Kiba returned back normal as well. As one of his hands were limply at his side, Kabuto smiled at Kakashi. You should have brought Hinata with you. She would have actually been a threat to me. I'll show you a threat. As Kakashi rushed forward the kunai, Kabuto was disappointed to not have the lightning blade used on him. Did he did not think him as a threat then? Kabuto simply danced away to give him more room. As the hand came in towards his chest, he striked it. But Kakashi then poofed away. Huh. He must have slipped in a shaklun while I was focused on Kiba and his stupid dog. The real Kabuto burst out of the earth with a lightning blade. As Kabuto twists just in time, as Kakashi was going for the heart but it plunged right into his left shoulder. Screaming in pain he jumped back. As the muddy force swept way under his feet as he was pulled into a torrent. As it pulled him away from sight. Damn it said Kakashi. Just six more inches to the right and you'll be down. Maybe. He will drown said Kiba. As he didn't sound like he believed in himself. Not that one. He's got a real gift for survival. Come on. We need to find Tata so she can fix the damage on you too. Meanwhile Jiraiya. I found someone up ahead. Is it Itachi or Kabuto? Neither. It's a ninja I've never seen before. And he's running towards the south end of the valley. He has a lot of chakra capacity. Jerry a frown. How much exactly? I think he may have double what Nurta has. But it's much less than what Nurta used to have. Well, that's not good, said Jerry. As he tried to call in the others, but he heard only static. Great. It'd pick a real good time to break down. Actually, Jerry, Hinata said. All the lightning has likely as the air. And it's making radio communication impossible. Um, of course, said Jiraiya. Well, if Akaski is interested in him, let's find out who this guy is. A couple minutes later, they launched themselves out, landing in front of a flea ninja. Jerry got a good look at him. He seemed to be 18 or 19. Long silver here, the color of Kakashi's, that went straight down his back. And his eyes were silver as well, with tiny flecks of blue in them, ragged tan shirt and pants that were falling apart. On his side was a couple shirkin holders. Around his neck was a necklace that seemed to be made from teeth of animals. Jure held out his hand in a calming gesture, but the boy shouted, Leave me alone! Hinata saw his chakra spike. As it went up as she followed it, she leaped Jure as she shouted. The light was bright, and she could feel the heat as the thing struck the ground where she was a second ago. It was horribly close with a clean miss. Jure had only begun to leap, but the lightning was too fast and struck him. He screamed out in pain as his body shook and burned, as he collapsed down unconscious. He never rushed over to help him, as she did a quick diagnostic jutsu. His life was not in immediate danger, 
but he had severe second and third degree burns over his left shoulder, chest and back. If he was awake, he would have been screaming. As she immediately began the correct medical duty to start the help on fixing the worst of it. But when this was over, he had to be transported to Kanoa Hospital, Burn, Ward. The boy simply ran away as he didn't bother to look back over his shoulder. He just kept on running. With her beer gun still active, she watches his run, but she could do nothing about it. Meanwhile, as Naruto stood there in an empty field, with the other person from the next figure looking at him. Hello, Itachi kun said Naruto. Itachi smiled. Hello, Naruto kun he said. The two faced each other in the pouring rain, the Hokage and the traitor, as Yujita was a few steps behind Naruto. She could feel his killer intent rising higher and higher. She noticed his hands trembling just a bit. She looked across where Itachi stood. As she knew to avoid his face, she could sense nothing at all from him. He was incredibly calm. Your right sleeve looked burned, said Naruto. I was struck by lightning. You hurt, said Naruto. Itachi shook his head. The injury was minor and has been healed by Kabuto. As silence, as the only sound could be heard was the rain. You may doubt this coming from me. But it pleased me to see you alive, Nurtakan, said Itachi. Well, that was surprising. Considering that it was you who captured me, it was the command of my organization that I do so. Well, and we all know how much loyalty means to you, said Naruto. Another silence as lightning crashed in the sky. How are you alive, Nurtakan? When we departed, you were certainly dead. Since Tejas Nadi was alive at that point, I assumed that she was responsible. Yujito gasped as she turned towards Naruto. He was actually dead? This guy is full of surprises. Naruto nodded, my godmother used a forbidden technique and brought me back to life and the cause of her own. I know you want revenge, is that it? Yes, said Naruto. I want revenge not only for my godmother and myself, but for the village and everyone that you betrayed. This is foolish, Naruto kun, Itachi said as he almost sounded sad. You cannot hope to defeat me. Hmm. You're arrogant bastard, you know that. It is not arrogance. It is a simple fact. Even with the power of the Kayube. You were no match for my Sharingan. Gee, Itachi, you shall like most of the Uchiha's relying on their Sharingan alone. I thought that was what you hated about your clan especially. Naruto looked at you, Jito. Can you see in the dark? Hmm? I know. Cats have night vision. Do you? She hesitated as she did not like sharing her secrets. But she answered, yes I do. Good. Get ready. I will not kill you, Naruto-kun, said Itachi. But if you choose to attack me again, I will shatter your mind once again. Oh really, you won't kill me? And what made me so special? Do you remember when we first met Nurtakan? Yeah, I was a student, leaving the academy with my mom. Yes. I looked at you with my Sharingan, you asked me what I saw. Do you remember what my answer was? You said I was a mystery. As he could still remember squirming under Itachi gaze. So what do you see now? I see a worthy Okagi, a powerful ninja, and someone I respect in this world. There are only a few people I respect. I would hate to lose you. Naruto was surprised to hear that. Unlike most people in the world, Itachi would never say something he did not believe. Thank you, said Naruto. And I would admit, I respect your courage and your skills almost as much as I loathe the choices you have made. This is the third time we have faced each other, and it will be the last. As he brought his hands up and went through Hansine, Spear of Eternal Night. To both Itachi and Naruto, everything suddenly went black. This was not the darkness of night. This was complete darkness. Even the smallest flicker of light had been seeped out. Had there been someone nearby, they would have seen a massive dome of darkness. About 200 yards appeared. The rain passed through it, but nothing could be seen but an inky blackness. A sudden terror filled Itachi's heart. He was blind. This was his one secret fear. He feared it more than death. Since activating his mangeto, his sight has been slowly failing him. He was terrified as he clamped down in the fear. What is this? Multi share clone jutsu. A hundred clones flicker into existence and third Idachi struck a signature. As Naruto was just as blind as his opponent, but he had long since developed excellent chakra sensory skills. He was more than willing to fight blind. This is a special jutsu I developed to counter the Sharingan. That is impossible, said Itachi. He could sense chakra as well, but his skills was nowhere near Naruto level as that. No genjutsu can fool the Sharingan. Who said this was a genjutsu? This is a ninjutsu. I create a field that absorbs light and chakra. I got the idea from an earth style jutsu that used the same, but a dome. Along with blinding you, it will slowly absorb your chakra and feed it into me. So the longer we stay here, the stronger I get and the weaker you get. I see, Itachi said, despite not being able to see anything. Then, we cannot afford to waste time. 
as he jumped up and went through Einstein. Phoenix, immortal flame technique, he said. Dozens of small balls of fire flew from his mouth. The clones draw their blade and rushed in, as a true nerd to that sport as well. Yujito could see clearly what was going on. She was probably the only one that could see. Itachi fireballs were small but enough to destroy several of the clones. The rest kept coming as things were getting serious. Looks like I finally get to fight. As she released a demonic chakra, as her body shifted, as she transformed into a 10 feet high, Nibi. Both Itachi and Naruto sense it. As Naruto smiles, Itachi took note of it. Grand fireball technique. Itachi sent out three massive boulders of flame, as he fired out several shurikens as well. As they could hear the poof, and send some of the chakra signatures disappearing. But not enough of them as he tossed handfuls of kuna and shurikens. He was hitting some of them but the rest kept on closing in. As he landed and pressed his back against a tree. He was in a desperate position without his Sharingan. As he saw the irony. He had condemned his clan for relying too much on the Sharingan. That was your weakness. And now he had been doing the same for a very long time. I am truly sorry that I come to this Naruto. But you leave me no choice. Amaterasu. As black flames spew out. Like a wall as it devoured everything that it touched. As Itachi heard the pops of clones. As the fire rushed off towards the two people in front of him. I am sorry Naruto he said. Naruto stopped his charge, he got the men from his clones. None of them could see anything of course, but they dispel. And they also felt the intense heat before they dispel. As he could sense a big jutsu coming straight towards him. He was about to leap, but he felt claws grab him and place him on the earth. As his body was covered. Stay down said Yujito. She could see what was coming, a wave of fire that was turning everything to ash. The black flames reached and it felt like he was thrown into the sun. She would have never believed it but even a creature like the Nibi of elemental fire could be burned. The Jutsu destroyed the form but she forced out more demonic chakra to reform it. Again and again Nibi chakra fought back, keeping the black flames away from Yujito's flesh. But after a couple of minutes, with her using so much of her power to keep that bait, Itachi collapsed on the ground as the black flames receded. As she collapsed down next to Naruto as she was back in her human form. As Naruto could sense her but he could still not see her. As Naruto was reaching for her, as his hand touched right between her, well, chest and stomach. What are you doing, she said, a very tired and surprised voice. As he yanked his hand back as he was blushing a bit. Sorry, I was just taking you alright, honestly, he said. I'm fine, but I never thought that jutsu. I'm sorry, but stopping it took everything out of me. Thank you for protecting me, he said. I'm your bodyguard. That is what I was hired to do. Stay right here, I'll be back as soon as I can. That's a promise, he said. As he rushed off towards Itachi, Itachi pushed himself back up Amaterasu, took a whole lot out of him. He wasn't sure what happened but demonic chakras diminished and Naruto was coming towards him. Did the two tails protect you from my attack? Is that how you survived Naruto? Her name is Ujito, said Naruto. As he started to throw his three prom kunai towards Itachi, if you are going to talk about her, call her by her name. As Itachi dodged him easily as he could hear them coming at him. Your attacks are weak Naruto and the emotion in your voice is obvious. I told you long ago you need to turn away from emotions, they only weaken you. Naruto kept tossing his 3 prom kunai and continued to miss. If you believe that, you're still a fool. A ninja strength is only revealed when you try to protect those who are precious to him. I've seen what people can do when they're fighting to protect what they love. That is when they can become as strong as they need to be. That's where you're wrong, love is a weakness. Concern for others will only distract you from your ultimate goal. To achieve power, you must prepare to act in your own interest and not regard others. You're sick, said Naruto. How can you stand to feel that way? I'm the Hokage and I have power. But it would mean nothing to me if I had no one to share it with. If I didn't have people I treasure and want to protect. It's a pity in Rutagon. I hope that your eyes would have opened by now. I had hoped that you would see what this world for it truly is. A heartless jungle where the weak is devoured by the strong. I hope you see and become truly strong but you did not. If you mean become like you I'd rather die first. I'd rather die than become anything like you. Itachi came to a stop at Itachi. Felt Naruto stop throwing the three prom kunais. As Naruto pulled out his katana, Itachi. Would you be willing to surrender and return back to Konoha and face trial? Itachi smiled. No. In that case, let's end this. As Itachi heard Naruto's feet left the ground, but he didn't know where he went. Itachi looked around but he could not see anything until something ripped right into his back. Blood burst from his mouth. It's over, said Naruto. The jutsu, Naruto ended it. The entire place was blackened, ash everywhere except for the part that Yujito lied on the ground. The rain was still pouring down, Naruto was behind Itachi, holding his katana. Itachi blood was pulling out and mixing with the rain. Itachi looked at two foot of steel coming out of his chest. 
Congratulations, Nerdicon. As he felt his body becoming cold, you've killed me. His voice was not filled with anger or anything. Before you die, tell me, how do I defeat pain, Senruto? If you have any affection toward the village, tell me how I defeat pain. Hm. He touches chocolate as he coughs more blood. Not for the village, but respect for you. I will answer. Use the same jutsu. He has a ring gun. Stronger than... He touch a cough out more blood. Me. He's... He's... Six. What do you mean, he's six? What six, Nerta asks? He touch turn his face up to the heavens. I can't see. I'm blind. Those were his final words. As he slipped off of Nerta Katana and collapsed the ground. As Nurta stood there and looked at the body, it was finally over. Itachi Uchiha was dead. Nurta stood there looking at the body as it felt strange. A tiny guilt of sad he felt as the blood was washed off his katana by the rain as she sheeted it. You did it. As he saw Yujito approaching him, I guess I did. Are you alright? I'm fine. I was actually wounded, just tired. I recover fast. Nurta reached on and pulled the ring off Itachi's finger and placed on his own. To the victor, go the spoils, she said to him. Nurta turned to her. I wear two pieces of jewelry. And when I marry Hinata, I'll wear three. As he pulled out the necklace from around his neck and displayed to her. This was the first Takari necklace. It was made for the first, the founder of my village. He gave it to his granddaughter, Lady Snavi. She gave it to me on my 13th birthday. She always believed it was cursed and anyone that wear it who was not destined to be Hokage will die. She told me it was proof of her belief that I will become a Hokage one day. For me, it's a constant reminder of everyone I love and everyone I want to protect. As he held up the ring, this is a reminder of the enemies that is out there. The ones who threaten me and everyone I love. It's a reminder that I will defeat them all, he said. As he looked up, the rain is lightning down. I can't ride the school until it stops. As he created a clone to pick up Itachi's body. Come on, Kabuto is slow there. It took a while but all of them were gathered. Jiraiya was still unconscious but Hinata assured them that he would be fine. He and Akumaru were patched up and they were fine. The fact that Kabuto was still alive was disappointed. As Hinata noticed the look that Naruto had. Are you alright Naruto Kanchi asked. I'm glad that I killed him. No regrets there. But he was a great ninja and I respected him. Even though I hated him. There is nothing wrong with respecting a worthy adversary. Said Kakashi. Well, at the very least, it means that this mission was worthwhile. Hinata-chan, tell me about this ninja who attacked Jiraiya. I don't think he was really trying to attack him. He was just frightened and he was desperate to get away. If he was already attacked by Kabuto and Itachi, it's understandable that he was feeling desperate. Said Kakashi. It doesn't excuse what he did, said Kiba. Maybe. But it does explain things. But if he's trying to get away from two Akaski, I know why he would attack first and act first and later. But if Akaski is interested in him, now I am as well. He might just be a Jinjulki. You think so? said Yujito curiously. As Nurta turned towards her, have you ever heard of a Jinjulki that matched Hinata Chan? Description. No. The only other ones I heard of were you and Gara, and that was only after the battle. Where? The knowledge became public. There is surprisingly little information available about the Bejus. No, but if this guy is a Jinjulki, we have to find him before the Akaski does. The sky above him started to clear away. Kiba, do you think you can track him? There isn't a trace of his scent left to go on the rain and wash it all away. We could try to find a trail, but that might take a good while. About how long are the acts? No telling. Days. Maybe weeks. If he can whistle up a rainstorm whenever he wants, it's gonna be really hard. Alright, Senruto. I'm giving you and brother an A rank mission. Track this guy down no matter how long it takes, but don't confront him. When you find him, contact me. If he really says in Jolke, we need to handle him with care. Kakash and Kibo nodded. What about me, Nerutukan? Asked Hinata. Hinata, I need to return with me and the rest of the group. I need you to help Jerry while he recovers. And hurry up the process if you can. She nodded. She was more than happy to stay with him. As Naruto spoke to Kakashi and Kiba, as he got the schools, and sealed away the others, and sealed Itachi in another school. And with that, he flashed away. Time skip. Ryuki was currently in his home. As he was in the conference room, with him was his daughter, his sister in law Mikoto, and the five elders of the clan. The door to the room opened, and in stepped the Hokage. And the blonde, ninja who was always with him nowadays, 
as Naruto was dressed in full Hokage robes, and he looked quite serious. Ryuki and the others all about your leader. Welcome to my home, Hokage-sama. Thank you for inviting me into your home, and for agreeing to this meeting on such short notice. Ryuki paused and gave him a false smile. I am always at your service, Hokage-sama. As you can see, everyone you requested is present. Could you inform me what the present of this meeting is? Naruto pulled out a scroll. I've come here to inform you that the missing in, Itachi Uchiha is dead. As they were surprised, none of them were expecting that. As Mikoto looked especially shaken, as he felt like, as the husband, the father that Itachi murdered, she deserved to know first. As Ryuki recovered, when did this happen and to who do we owe our thanks? I killed him less than two hours ago. The details will have to remain secret. I hope you can understand that. Of course, Ryuki said. Naruto killed Itachi? And without the Kayubi's power, he thought to himself. He was certain that Naruto's reputation would rise higher. As much as Kakashi did after slaying or tomorrow. Out of respect to the Uchiha clan, I return his body. You may do with it as you wish. You mean his body is inside that scroll, Ryuki asked. That's right. Ryuki took a step back. Could you please show us Hokage-sama? You mean right here in her to ask, he looked at Mikoto. As she seemed to be getting paler by the second. Are you certain you want to see it right now? The body is not in pristine condition. Gabriela reached over and put a comforting hand on her aunt's back. Father, maybe it would be best if... I think we will all like to see the truth rather sooner than later, Yuki said. Please show us Hokage-sama. Naruto glanced at Mikoto, but nodded. As you wish. Release. As Mikoto fell down to her knees as she cried. Gabriela wrapped her arms around her shoulders and tried to offer her some comfort. The elders and Ryuki seemed satisfied. I am sorry for the pain this has caused, but I thought Uchiha clan would want the body to be returned. Mikoto looked up and nodded, no. I thank you Hokage sama she said. I know that my son did terrible things, and your killing him was justice. At least this way he will be put to rest with his family. No he will not Ryuki said. He's a disgraced Uchiha name. He murdered his own father and my brother. He will not be buried within the clan. As he looked towards Mikato and the others. But guys, it'll be any subscribe right here. If you want to take part in this or not to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notifications to stay posted. Remember to share all of your friends on your social media platform. Remember to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto was the direct descendant of a sage on this channel, guys, and enjoy that. And also over on Anime King 3, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto was betrayed by Hakuromo. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys. And yeah, without further ado, I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.